So last week we started solving equations. Okay, we looked at mostly one-step equations where we either had to add, subtract, multiply, or divide, and that was the only step. And then we started to get into some two-step equations. Okay, so two-step equation might be something like 4x equals, um, let's say, uh, 10 plus you know, 2x. Okay, that's, that's a multi-step problem because now to solve it, you need to do two things. You might have to add or subtract and then divide. So we learned that there's a certain order that we follow whenever we uh, solve equations with multiple steps. And we're going to try to review that uh, right now. Okay, so solving equations with parentheses. And that's going to require us to use the distributive problem. So that's why we practiced it in the warm up. Um, when you use the distributive property and you draw like those lines, what, what operation does that need to do when we do distributive property? When you, what multiplication, right? When you draw those lines or those curves for distributive property, it means you're multiplying something on the outside times something on the inside. So a lot of multiplication. All right, what was that word that I need you guys to remember uh, how to solve equations? It's not PEMDAS. That's what you use when you're solving um, or simplifying like numbers, like, uh, like arithmetic. This one's a little different. Yeah. Sam. Yeah, so we use Sam. Uh, so we'll write it again on the guide notes. Uh, but does anyone remember what the S stood for in Sam? Um, no, not subtract. That's adding and subtracting. It's going to be the last thing we do. So there's a few things we got to do before that. Yeah? Let's see. Um, there's part of it under this step that might be like combine like terms, which means you're looking for things that are the same. But the S word? Simplify. Simplify, yep. All right, so we don't have to look back in your notes. We'll just review it. So we got simplify. Okay, under simplify, there's two things that we need to do. Um, one of them we kind of already said, and actually the other one we did in the warm-up. Um, what's the first thing that we always have to do under simplify? Remember what we wrote. It was a step we wrote last week, but we never had to do it. The what property? Yep. Yeah. So that's the first step that you always have to do under simplify. We wrote it down last week, but we never did it. Now uh, we're going to do it. So the first step is to distribute or use the distributive property. And then after you do that, um, Zach kind of gave us a hint, something to do with like same. Um, does anyone remember? Second thing you do under simplify? Like terms, like terms. Combine like terms, exactly. So C L T, combine like terms. How do you how do you know if things are like terms? Would they like have the same variable or whatever? So yeah, they have the same variable. Like if I said 2x, what would be something that would be a like term with that? Yep. 15x. 15x. What would be something that's not a like term? 4y. 4y. Okay. Or 5x squared. Okay. Those are those are different. Okay. So combined like terms uh, got to have the same letter, and they also have to have the same power. So 2x and 2x squared. <coughs> those aren't like terms. Now, when we combine the like terms, they have to be on the same side of the equal sign. And we're not talking about moving things from side to side yet. So here's an example. That's an example of an equation where you could combine like terms. Okay, the 2x and the 4x are on the same side of the equal sign, and we would combine them together. We're not going to do the whole problem, but if you combine your x's on the left-hand side, can you mind tell me what, what you would get? 2x. So 2x is 1x, and then 4x 
So that would give you a 6x. What about the 3? Can I combine that? No, because that's not a like term. So that just stays where it is. And the 12, well, that was on the other side. So that would be your first step in that equation, okay? combining like terms. Yep. So would the answer be 4.5? The answer to that problem? Um, so I wasn't going to go through and do the whole thing, um, but the answer would be 1.5. Yep, or you could write it as a fraction 3 over 2. That would be the final answer. One, 3 halves or 1 and a half, 1.5. Yeah. All right, how about the A step? Um, so we did, did the simplify. What comes after simplify? Addition or subtraction. Yeah, addition or subtraction. I think I said that with last, and then it's, it's the second step. Addition or subtraction. So now, when we do that step, we are adding and subtracting on both sides, and we're moving things from side to side. Okay, so that's the S, the A, and the last step is the M. And what does the M stand for? It really is two things. Yes? Multiply or divide. So if there's any multiplying or dividing you need to do, you do that in the very last step. So as far as uh, like notes in like explaining things, the only explanation for today is really that. We've done it before. Uh, now we'll just do some examples and um, follow those steps. I think there's four, four equations and then a, um, a word problem for the last one. Okay. Anyone have any questions on the steps? All right, let's try an example. So, what makes this a little different than the problem in the homework is it doesn't say, or the problem in the warm-up, it doesn't say simplify, it says solve. Okay, simplify would be if I gave you that and I just said to distribute out what you can. Once I put an equal sign in there, put a number on the other side, now you can solve. Okay, so remember your steps. You may not have every step in every problem, but go through those steps each time. And I'm going to give you guys a couple minutes to try that one and see if you can solve. You do not have to check the answer. So when you're done, just write x equals and then tell me what you get. Okay, so our first problem um, it does have distributive property, so that's the first thing we look for under SAM. And what am I distributing in this case? Right, it's like we're distributing, if you want to make that a negative 1, you can put the 1 in there. So it's, we're, we're distributing negative 1. So sometimes I circle it, and then I draw out what I'm distributing to. Okay, so what's going to happen to the 12 in this step? Yeah? Nothing. Nothing. 12 is just going to stay where it is. Everything that's happening in this step is on the right-hand side. So let's start with negative 1 times 4x. What's negative 1 times 4x? Yep. Yeah. Good. Negative 4x. Now we also have to distribute the negative 1 to the negative 8. What's negative 1 times negative 8? Yep. Yeah. Yep, good. Positive 8. And that takes care of the distributive property. Uh, is there any combined like terms on the same side? No. No. First of all, you have a 12 that's all by itself. And then you have a number with an x and a number without it. So we can't combine like terms. So the next step we go to is the a step. Adding or subtracting. The goal eventually is to get this by itself. Is there any adding or subtracting we can do 
to start to get things away from that X. Yeah? Subtract positive 8 on both sides. Yep, so we're going to subtract 8 on both sides. Now, 8 minus 8 gives me 0, so that, that's gone. 12 minus 8 gives me 4. And what do I still have on the right-hand side? I still have the negative 4x. So that's the adding and subtracting. Now we're at the last step. Multiply and divide. Is the x by itself on the right? No. What's with the net x that we don't want? The x. The negative 4. What are we doing with the negative 4 and the x the way it's written on the board? Multiplication. We're multiplying. So we want to get rid of multiplying by a negative 4. Divide. So what operation undoes multiplication? Divide. Divide. And what's the number that we want to get rid of? Negative 4. So we're going to divide by that number. When we divide each side by negative 4, the negative 4 is gone from the right side. Because negative 4 divided by negative 4 is? Zero. 1x. 1. 1x, yep. <coughs> So we just have x. And on the left side, what's positive 4 divided by negative 4? Yeah. Negative 1. Negative 1. Now if you write your answer like that, or some people like to switch it around like that, that's the same thing. As long as you get negative 1 for x, um, you did it right. Okay. Any question on uh, example 1? So I didn't have every step in it. I didn't have the like terms. Um, but it did have a distributive property, adding, subtracting, and it did have multiplying and dividing. Okay, let's try that one. So that says, you can't quite read it, it's 8 and then in parentheses 4 plus 3k minus 7 equals 97. Okay, so let's start this one together. We'll do the first step, and then I'll let you guys try it from there. Okay, first thing is simplify. Uh, what's the first thing we always look for under simplify? Uh, like terms is the same. Distributive, distributive property. Do we have distributive property? Yes. Okay, what are we distributing? Eight. Eight, and what are we distributing it to? Four and three k. And three k. So we'll do that step together, and then I'll let you guys go from there. Okay, what's 8 times 4? 32. 32. And then 8 times 3k. Get stuck. Just think of 8 times 3 first. And then when you're done, put a k on your answer. 24k. 24k. What's still on the left side that I didn't do anything to? Seven. Yeah, I didn't do anything to the negative 7 because that wasn't inside the parentheses. So that negative 7 is still there. And what's still on the right side? 97. Okay, so you're still under the simplify step now. And the next thing you look for is combine like terms. So if you think you have like terms, go ahead and combine them. And I'll, I'm going to give people a couple minutes to try that. Okay, but that's, that's your first step. All right, so let's, let's take a look at this one. So after you do distributive property, the next step is the combined like terms. Now remember, combined like terms doesn't mean you're moving things from side to side. Okay, when you move things from side to side, that's when you do the opposite operation. But combined like terms... You're just combining things on the same side. So you're not doing the opposite. So here, you've got a positive 32. You've got a negative 7. You're just going to combine them together. You don't do the opposite. So what do you get if you take 32 and combine it in a negative 7? Yep. Yep, positive 25. Now, you can't add that 25 to the 24. Why not? Because they're not like terms. They're not like terms. One has a k, one doesn't. So we just have to leave it as 25 plus 24k. Uh, and at this step, nothing happens to the 97. <coughs> so we did the add subtract. No, I'm sorry. We did the distributive property. 
Combine like terms. Now we're at the add and subtract. Is there anything I can add and subtract here that will help me to start to pull things away from the K? Yep. Uh, you could subtract 25 from both sides. Yep, you can subtract the 25 on both sides. So 25 minus 25 gives me zero. zero. What's on the left-hand side now? 24, no, uh, 24K. Right, so we still have 24K. And on the right side? 27 to, er, 72. Yep, you get 72. <laughs> yeah. How did you get 25? Um, 32 minus 7. Okay, so for me, whenever I do it, I always do like, I always do the negatives. I do, I'll do negative 7, negative 7, I'll do positive 7, and then I'll add that to 32. That's only when you're moving things from one side of the equal sign to the other. That's my problem. Yeah. yeah. So when you do combine like terms, you don't you don't do the opposite. You're not trying to move something from one side to the other. You're keeping it all on the same side. You're just taking what you have and like squishing it together. Yeah. So when you do that, you don't do the opposite. You just combine exactly what you see on the same side together. Okay, so now we've got 24K equals 72, and we're at the multiply and divide step. Uh, is there any multiplying or dividing we can do to get k by itself? Yeah? You divide 24. Yep, by. by so 24. So 24k divided by 24. 24. And then you would do 72 divided by And we're going to divide that by 24. And you can use your calculator. Uh, but that does come out to a nice number. What is 72 divided by 24? Is it positive 3? It comes out to positive 3. And that's your answer. So that problem had four steps in it. Distributive property, combined like terms, subtraction, division. So we're getting to the point where some of the equations we have, you're not really going to be able to just guess the answer in your head for k. It's, it's getting to be too many steps now. So make sure uh, when you do the homework, I need to see, and there's enough room if you print it out. If not, you use blank paper, then you should have plenty of space. Make sure you're showing me these steps. Okay, if all you have is like k equals 3, I have no idea how you got it. So I gotta, I have to see how you, how you got it. Right. So are we allowed to do it right here? What's that? Are we allowed to do it right here? As long as you write down everything you're thinking, yes. But I need to see the steps. If you don't want to use a calculator, you mean? Is that what you're asking? You don't have to, but you got to write down the steps. So if you want to do the calculations in your head, I would suggest using a calculator just in case you make a mistake in your head. And it's probably faster just to type it in on a calculator. But. All right, let's try uh, an equation that has two sets of parentheses. So you don't have to write that down. This is just what we're going to do. Here's, here's the problem. So now, there again, no way you're guessing the answer to that. Especially if it comes out to a decimal. <clears throat> if it's like p equals 4.61, I mean, how, how are you going to guess that? All right, so how many sets of parentheses do we have in this one? Two. So that means we're going to have to do the distributive property step twice. Okay. What's the first thing that I'm going to distribute? Uh, negative 1. A negative 1. So if you want to squeeze that 1 in, you can do that. Y7P. So we're going to do it to the 7P. We'll write that down in a minute. And to the 3. To the three. And that's it for the first one. Okay. <clears throat> what am I distributing in the next distributive property? <coughs> Negative 3. Negative 3. The sign to the left always goes with the number. And then P. So you're going to distribute it to the P and two. the 2. So what's not going to change at all in this step? 61. Yeah, we might as well just put equals 61. Put that on the other side because we don't have to do anything with it. Okay. So now let's go through the distributive property. Uh, one step at a time, I'll at least maybe start you on it, because then we have another one, and then the word about. Okay. 
All right, so let's do uh, negative 1 times 7p. Yeah? Uh, unless you're multiplying by 1, then what you have is going to change. And we're multiplying by a negative. <coughs> negative 7p. So negative 1 times positive 7p is negative 7p. And what about negative 1 times positive 3? Negative 3. Negative 3. Okay, so that's it for your first distributive property. Now the second one. Um, what's negative 3 times p? Yep. Negative 3p. Negative 3p. And what's negative 3 times positive 2? Negative six. Negative six. I'm just going to fix my equal sign here. Okay. Now, uh, that's distributive property. Do we have any like terms? Yes. All kinds of like terms. Let's start with the negative 7p. What can that be combined with? 3p. Negative 3p. Negative 3p. How about negative 3? Negative six. negative 6. So remember, when we combine like terms, we're not doing the opposite. You're just taking what you have and putting it together. So you have negative 7p and negative 3p. Negative 10p. That's a negative 10p. Think about if you combine negative 7 with negative 3 and you add them together. That's negative 10. And we put the p on. How about uh, negative 3 combined with a negative 6? It's like negative 3 plus negative 6. That's a negative 9. And what's still on the right-hand side that we didn't do anything with? We still have the 61. But now you've taken it from something that looked pretty complicated on the left side, and now it's a lot simpler. So now you've got two steps left. <coughs> See if you can finish up that equation. Finishing up this one. So as I walked around, most people had the, the next step good, uh, which was the add and subtract step. Um, what did we have to add or subtract to this next step? Yep. Positive 9. Yep. So we're going to do a positive 9. We're going to add 9 on both sides. What's negative 9 plus 9? Zero. <coughs> Zero. What does that leave you with on the left side? Negative 10p. So we just have the negative 10p. So p is not by itself yet, but it's better. And then 61 plus 9 70. gives you 70. That's it for adding and subtracting. Uh, multiply and divide. Do we have any multiply or divide? Divide. D divide, yep. And what would we divide each side by to get rid of them? So, yep. And that's gone. 70 divided by negative 10. And that's negative 7. And what's that equal to? P. P. Yeah, P. So P equals negative 7. Again, looks looks a little more complicated, but if you break it down step by step and you just follow those steps, it really can make any problem that looks complicated a lot simpler to try to try to work through. Um, let's do the word problem first, and then if we have time, we'll come back. This one's pretty similar to the last one, where you have two sets of parentheses. This one's a little different because you have to come up with the equation first and then solve it. So let's just read it. Um, do you guys have this one written down on your notes? No. no? Okay, so you'll have to copy that one. Um, I'll give people a minute to copy that. So it says it. Yeah, you'll have to write that one down. Usually I have it written on there. I guess this one I Is that the extra practice? Um, this is example five. That's supposed to look like. So there's no example four. Uh, there it is, but we just skipped it for now because it's really the same or very similar to example three. Yeah. We might go back and do example four 
Uh, we'll see. So it says if Jim's age is decreased by nine, that and that difference is multiplied by eight, you get forty-eight. Find Jim's age. Okay, so what's, the, what's the difference? What's that? Well, it says if you do that calculation, the result is 48. And then we have to solve for Jim's age. So we got to figure out first here what's important. And I'll just kind of highlight some things. So, difference? Yeah, the word difference is important. Decrease, So, decrease, that tells us to do something in math. What else is important? Multiply. Uh, multiply, that's important. That's going to tell us. The result. The result isn't really super important. But then, yeah, anything that's a number. So the 9, the 48, and the 8. Um, there's something else up there that we're going to have to use in a couple other things. H. No. Oh, fine. So, fine. That's just telling us what to do. That's not actually going to be part of the um, equation. That's just part of the directions. But what else is important? Jim's age. Jim's age, right? That's a variable. So, that's there's the variable in the whole thing. Um, and there's one more word that's important here that... Basically, if you didn't have this word, you wouldn't have an equation. Yeah? Is. is. The result is 48. So now let's see if we can start to kind of translate what some of these things mean. Okay, what are we solving for here? Jim's age. Jim's age. Do we know Jim's age right now? No. no. That's what we're solving for. So we should pick a letter to represent Jim's age. Yeah? J. Okay, so we could use J uh, for Jim's age. Let me put this back on the pen. Okay, so J for Jim's age. So if Jim's age is decreased, what does that mean? What do you do when you're, so you're going to subtract? And then number nine, that just means nine. So we're going to decrease Jim's age by nine. Um, and then we're going to take that entire difference and multiply it by 8. Okay, so let's start writing some stuff out. Yeah. How would you represent taking Jim's age and decreasing it by 9? J minus 9. Okay, so Jim's age decreased by 9. Now, if you take that entire thing and multiply it by 8, that's what this part is saying. If you take that entire difference and multiply it by 8, what would I have to put here if I want to multiply this whole thing by 8? I need parentheses. So if you take that difference and then times it by 8, we're up to this step right here, where I just put that dotted line. And then the last part now, if you take all of that, the answer is 48 equals 48. So it's not even as bad of an equation to solve as some of the other ones we did. The hard part is just figuring out the equation. So, so again, Jim's age decreased by 9. And then you take that entire, what I'll usually put if I want you to use parentheses, so I'll probably put the word like the entire thing so you know all of it. So that entire thing is multiplied by 8, and the result is 48. Okay. Let's see if we can figure out um, Jim's age. Okay. What would be my um, first step? To distribute yep. Distribute out that 8. So what's 8 times J? 8J. Yep. So 8J, and then 8 times negative 9. Um, negative. Negative. 72. Equals, and what's on the other side still? 48. 48. OK. 
Okay, and we've got two steps left to get J by itself. What would be the next step? Yeah? Um, plus 72. Perfect. I'm going to add 72. So negative 72 plus 72 gives you how much? Zero. Zero, that's gone. Uh, now I need to do 48 plus 72. Uh, yep, 120. So is that his age, 120? No, what's still on the other side? 8J. 8J. So now what do we do? Yep. Divide each side by 8. And yeah, we're going to get j equals 15. Now we should put a label on that. What is 15 again? His age. So what should we put? 15 years old. 15 years, yeah. How old is he? 15 years old. So that's solving problems where uh, you have distributive property and combined like terms. So homework tonight uh, is the one, it's the same section we just have at the top of your guided notes. It's the worksheet. Uh, it's one worksheet, it's all one PDF. So you can print it out or you can just do it on blank paper, but I do have to see your work. Okay, please make sure you show your steps.